I'm delighted today that I've been joined by Eden Silver and she's been on my waiting list for a long time for me to speak to her. She was one of the, one of the first people I thought about that I wanted to speak to, but I thought, let me, you know, in terms of her schedule and everything, I thought I'd just leave her alone for a little while, but I'm delighted to say that she's joined me for a chat today. How are you, Eden? Hi, Anne-Marie. Yeah, well, I mean, best things come to those who wait. So. <laughs> nice answer. Nice answer. That's a brilliant answer. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. There's so much to talk about with you, but let's start right at the beginning, I guess. How are you? How's your family doing with uh, lockdown? Um, I think we're all doing really well. I mean, at the beginning, when lockdown started, it was all sort of a little bit of a shock to everyone. Um, everyone sort of adjusting to the new sort of routine that they had to get into. But I mean, myself and my family in general, we've been really, we've been really supportive of each other at home. We've kind of, you know, acknowledged that it's going to be a little bit of a tough time. So we've done things that we don't usually do. Um, we've been really like trying to lift each other's spirits at home. So it's been, it's been a nice environment and nice atmosphere. Uh, obviously, as a tennis player, you're always travelling and you know hardly spending like much time at home. And um, I like very rarely see my mum and uh, brother. My dad sometimes travels with me um, quite regularly, so I get to see him quite a lot as he coaches me. Um, but my mum and brother are usually um, at home, so it was nice to sort of spend you know a lot of time with them and you know be at home for a change. And you've got a, a new family member that's joined you recently <laughs> as well. And I'm a fellow dog lover. Um, my boy oh. is no longer with us now. Uh, oh. but I, I, when I saw the picture of little Kobe, I, my heart just absolutely melted. Tell me a little bit about your new new family member. Oh, yeah, he's so cute. He's so mischievous, though. But I think that's what makes him more cute. Um, we got him actually the day before they announced the lockdown. So we've got him actually on Mother's Day. We were talking about, you know, on Mother's Day, I think I bought my mum a card with a puppy on it. And then we just started talking about him. And before we knew it, we, we bought, we had a new dog. Um, so yeah, he's made lockdown and quarantine a lot more enjoyable and fun. And yeah, I mean, it was perfect time to get a puppy because we were all at home. So we was able to like train him and spend a lot of time with him, which was, which was really nice. We have an older dog as well. So. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, what's that dynamic yeah. like between the older dog and the younger dog? It's good actually, yeah, because my, so my, I had another dog also last year who passed away end of, end of the year. So my older dog is used to having like a companion and another dog with her. So she was actually really sort of motherly with, uh, with Kobe when we brought, her, brought him home. So I think she enjoys the company. So yeah, they get on really well now. And the, the type of breed of dogs that you have? Um, so Sam, that's my older dog, she is a Mastiff and Kobe is also a South African Mastiff. Um, he's uh, called a Burble, so they're quite rare. Um, but yeah, he's a South African Mastiff, so he's going to be very big. Oh, I love dogs. I'm <laughs> very jealous and envious that you, you have a couple of dogs. Yeah. With it's, it's, I guess lockdown, as you say, it came, despite the tragic circumstances of it, it's come at the right time because Kobe can get used to you guys being around and the routine yeah. and training him. It's getting him used yeah. to when things get back to normal, leaving yeah. him on his own. That's going to be, I think, the tricky thing because he's so used to having us, all of us around him 24-7. So hopefully he's going to be well behaved when we will have to leave for work and leave the house for a, look, for a few hours. But yeah, fingers crossed. Well, talking about leaving the house for a few hours, have you actually managed to get back out on court now that lockdown is eased? Yeah, um, so for the last few weeks I've been back on court uh, training. It hasn't been as easy as you know, you'd know think because my local club, it's also an indoor facility. So they haven't been opened yet because it's a gym and indoor court, so they're still closed. So I've had to find you know other alternatives to go and train. So I've been going to Broxbourne Tennis Club, which is about 25, 30 minutes drive. Um, but they've been really helpful and supportive and let me train there the courts are really nice there so yeah it was just, it was great to you know after such a long time to get back on court and start training again have you got back into a rhythm of it all do you think in terms of getting back out onto the court with your, your hitting practice your drills all those kinds of things um yeah i think slowly it's not you know it's still a little bit abnormal everything that's going on because there's still certain restrictions and whatnot but um I've been kind of getting back to normal as much as you can. Um, obviously, because it's only an outdoor club, 
you know, when the weather is it's raining or something, you know, you're not able to train, so you have to adjust. And also because I haven't had access to any gyms, I've had to be um, out on the field with my fitness coach doing sort of different drills that, you know, you don't usually do. But I mean, it's sort of, you know, kind of explore different options and, you know, find solutions to little problems you have. But no, I've been, I've been enjoying it a lot to get back to some sort of normality. What made you fall in love with tennis in the first place? Um, I have a local tennis club, um, like five minutes, five minutes walk from my house and every Saturday they did a uh, mini tennis sort of squad. So one day my parents just took me there just, you know, as a activity sort of thing. Um, and I, I was really, I really enjoyed it and I thought I had good hand-eye coordination. Um, they saw that I was really enjoying myself and yeah, it just, you know, it just grew from there really. What age were you when you picked up a racket for the first time? Can you remember? Uh, three and a half. <laughs> wow. Three yeah. and a half. That's like Nadal. Yeah. I think when Rafael Nadal started when he was three years old. That fascinates me. He truly does. Like three years old knowing yeah, know, the racket my, in the first place. I know because my cousin, he has a little boy and he's just turned three yesterday. And when I look at him, I'm like, oh my God, you're so, you're so young. Like, I can't believe I was only a little bit older than you were when I started um, playing. But yeah. That was the age I started. And then you say so you started um, at the local tennis club. And, and when did the penny drop and you suddenly realised, you know, I think I could do this professionally? Um, I don't think there was like an exact sort of moment. It just, mm -hmm. you know, I started playing more. I started um, having lessons at that club. I uh, started playing just, you know, uh, national sort of tournaments. And yeah, it just, I know, it just grew from there, really. What, you started um, winning and you grew in confidence, I guess. Yeah, like, I think I won a few yeah. like little sponge ball tournaments when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the kind of go ahead, I guess. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think, you know, as, as if you're still enjoying it from that age and, you know, I'm just, I was still showing a lot of interest even as I was um, getting older. Mm. Uh, then yeah it just you know grew from there and I wanted to continue doing it at a more sort of serious level. How did you manage balancing friendships and school and tennis? Uh, well I left school actually after primary school finished so I didn't go to secondary school um, even when I was in primary school I would be you know doing two or three days a week at school and then two days would be uh, for training or I'd be, you know, taken out of school to go to training, like half days and stuff like that. So I thought, we advised my parents, I was quite young then, so we, as a family, we decided that, you know, you have to kind of either, you know, excel in your school or excel in tennis. It was very difficult to do both and, you know, do well in both. So we made a decision to be homeschooled um, after primary school. So I did a lot of my exams quite young and, yeah, I mean, I, I still keep in touch with a couple of girls from primary school, even like they're still like really good friends of mine. Oh, that's lovely. Um, I have my friends. Yeah, yeah, they've been, yeah. they're really supportive, and you know, they they've known me since I was nine years old, eight years old. So they've been through that sort of journey with me, and they've stayed really supportive. Um, and I've got a few really good friends from tennis as well. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's important to have a good you know friendship circle. Um, when you're doing something like tennis you know even if it's nothing even if they have nothing to do with tennis it's nice to sort of talk about something other than tennis and you know just have a kind of a dose of, of, no, of normality kind of thing. Yeah because that's really important nowadays isn't it we see that a lot that we want to know you know tennis is is the number one thing in a tennis player's life but they also have a life off the court as well which we're going to talk about in a bit so let's fast forward a bit um, to winning your first title in Helsinki. Tell me, tell me about that. I mean, I can't imagine how you felt when it was at match point. Yeah, we're going back a few years now. That was, I think, 2017. Um, yeah, I mean, that was a really um, like special moment for me because I mean, I know it was a 15k, but I reached so many finals in singles uh, in the singles tournaments, and I've always fell just short. I think that was my fifth or sixth final. And yeah, to finally have won it was, you know, it was really sort of nice feeling. Also, 
she was a couple match points up in that match as well. So I had to fight back to, you know, turn the match around. And from coming from being two match points down to finally winning it was, you know, it was, it was such a, a good feeling. And yeah, the first title, singles title, is always going to hold a special place in, in my heart, I guess. So can you tell me, before the season was suspended, what was those last few months like for you? Uh, so before the season suspended, I actually was talking to my parents the other day and we figured that I, ha I haven't actually played a singles match apart from one match uh, in Thailand in Feb this year where I went for doubles um, at a WTA and I just played a one-off singles match. I haven't actually competed in a proper singles match since October last year. So my season was pretty, pretty much like lockdown really. Even before lockdown happened, I was doing um, knee rehab. Um, I had a little bit of a knee injury on my left knee. So, yeah, I was at home pretty much from October till Feb this year. Um, so my sort of goal before lockdown happened was just to kind of feel fit and healthy again and get back to full fitness. And, yeah, I've, I competed in a few uh, WTA tournaments earlier this year um, with my doubles partner. Um, and yeah, so I think it was lockdown was kind of maybe a little bit of a blessing in disguise, gave me a little bit more time to you know properly um, get back on track with my knee. And yeah, I think I'm I'm ready to start competing again. You've said on your website that your journey so far has made you a strong person who's ready for the challenges that lie ahead of me. How did that quote come about? Uh, so in 2015. Um, I had quite a serious knee injury. Um, I had to have knee reconstruction surgery. So it kind of came from that. I mean, it was a really difficult time. I mean, when any athlete gets injured, it's always, you know, a bit of a mountain to climb. So you have to make sure you've got the right people around you, um, the right support. Uh, I was very lucky to have that. I had a very good um, team around me that made my rehab go really smoothly. Um, but yeah, it was, it kind of taught me to, you know, when things don't go you know, according to plan, you just got to find ways to, to come out of it stronger and it makes you mentally so much stronger. It makes you appreciate things that maybe you wouldn't have appreciated before and also get in touch with things outside of tennis and look at yourself as a person, which I thought it did. Um, so yeah, I definitely came out of it a lot stronger. And I feel like now, you know, any any challenge that I have with, uh, for me ahead that I'm able to, to overcome it. Now, you as a, as a tennis player, but obviously you must have a social life as well. Um, you're a daughter as well. You've got friends. Tell us about your life off the court. What is it like? Um, I think I have a, a really good life off the court, actually. I think I'm quite lucky. Um, I've got great friends, I've got a great best friend, um, I get on really well with my brother, we have a great relationship, um, which I think is so important to have. I feel like a lot of tennis players, and myself included, I've been guilty of this in the past, where you sort of judge yourself as a person based on how you're doing on the tennis court and based on how many matches you win and, you know, when you lose, it, you feel horrible. So to be able to separate yourself from, you know, tennis is your job, it's your career, which I, you know, I love, but it's not, you know, all of me. Um, so I think over the years, I've sort of learned how to separate the two. And yeah, I think it's so important to be able to come off the court and have a great support system in terms of the people around you. Um, and it's important to view yourself as, you know, not just a tennis player but who you are as a person outside of tennis because there is a life outside of of, of your job you know so i think that's, that's that's a really important thing to remember i think that's a really good piece of advice for any of the you know up and coming tennis players to remember it, it you know there is the, the game itself but also having a life off the court as i've seen from yeah. your social media as well which i think is a really healthy state of mind and you sound like such a strong confident person anyway so let's talk about in terms of life off the court would you let's race forward to retirement so to speak would you want to stay in the game or would you want to do something completely different like serena williams for example with her her fashion career and her management company would you want to do something like that 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I would, I would never say never to anything. Like uh, tennis has been a huge part of my life. So, so for me to say I would never be involved in anything, you know, to do with tennis after I retire is, you know, would be unfair to say at this stage. But yeah, I have, I have huge interest in fashion. I'm doing an online fashion course at the moment as well. So uh, it's something I'm really interested in. So I like to keep my options open and, you know, um yeah I, like I said I love fashion so it's something that you know I could potentially pursue after tennis or I'm so glad, I'm, I was gonna say I'm so glad you said that because when I when I was doing my prep and I was looking at your social media stuff thinking I think she likes fashion I got this feeling <laughs> that you really I I'm into my fashion as well so I know we yeah. are as well um so yeah I think that's fantastic that you're doing a, a fashion course yeah. as well that's again similar to like the Williams sisters of course yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of tennis players also forget that they're probably good and talented in other areas, but because you're so dedicated and focused on, on tennis as your job, you don't always get to explore different um, pathways. But I think that a lot of players, um, you know, if they kind of explore different options, they'd realise that they're gifted and talented in, in, in other things. So, yeah, I'd like to kind of keep different things open. And the one word that you describe yourself as is dedicated. You also describe yourself as hardworking and you also describe yourself as fierce. Why are those three words so important to you? Um, well, fierce, well, I, I like to think of myself as quite a feisty person. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Especially when I was younger, I was very feisty. I still have a bit of that in me as well. Um, but no, the word fierce came from, you know, it kind of stuck with me when I was going through my injury you know, something that I had to, I had to stay fierce basically and not kind of go into a shell and kind of feel sorry for myself. And it stuck with me from, from then. And it's something that I tried to, you know, make sure I remind myself of that I'm like a very feisty, fierce person, I'm strong. Um, I think hard working, I'm very hard working. I think a lot of athletes are. Um, so yeah, dedicated. I'm, I'm really dedicated to what I do. Um, I still enjoy what I do, so I think when you enjoy what you do, being hardworking and dedicated is, comes naturally, really. Now, Wimbledon this fortnight, for reasons that everybody knows about, of course, yeah. is grass your favourite surface? Uh, it's a, yeah, I think it is, for sure, even though it comes around once a year. Yeah. It just certain vibe and atmosphere around it which I don't know it just makes you feel really really special as a tennis player and I just feel like your game automatically improves when you when you step on the grass court so yeah I love playing on the grass. I think we should start a campaign to have more grass court tournaments in England and Wales and Scotland I think maybe yeah, you know, like the, maybe you're gone. I'm not sure about the weather that might be a, <laughs> yeah <laughs> It has to be during summer, otherwise the grass will suffer. <laughs> That's very true. I, I say that wistfully, hopefully it will happen, but you're right. The UK, the weather in this country will scupper that plan completely. But it does mean that we get to see some domestic tennis and, and it's great to know that you're going to be part of the, uh, the Progress Tour, which takes place next month, from what I understand, and your fellow compatriots, Katie Balter, Jodie Burridge, Emily Appleton, Fran Jones, Harriet Dart and other young women also taking part in that tournament how excited are you to be part of that yeah I think it's just great to sort of get back to some sort of normality it's been a very strange period of time you know tennis players aren't used to being at home for so long without playing tournaments we're usually you know week after week in a different place different country playing tournaments so it's just going to be really exciting and nice to get back out there and compete you know I'd at any any sort of level tournament I'd be happy with playing at, at the moment so yeah I'm really excited to get back out there and you know getting back into the competitive spirit so yeah it should be good. Do you think there should be a few more of these types of competitions in the UK? Um, I mean they do a lot of British tours but I feel like at the moment they're really putting a lot of effort Mm. in you know high prize money like adding a bit more hype around the tournaments which I think is nice as as an athlete it's always good to feel like the tournament is special and yeah they're putting a lot of effort into these tournaments so hopefully they'll be able to continue that even after lockdown and after things go back to normal. Did you see any of the Battle of the Brits last week? Yeah I did actually. I what did you think? 
Yeah. I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was really good. Yeah, the level of tennis was was great considering, you know, they've been out for a few months. Um Andy was playing great, even though he was uh, complaining about his hip a lot, but I think that's just boys and their banter. But no, it was, yeah. it was really good. <laughs> it was good to watch on tennis after so long. Do you know, I totally agree with you about that level of, of intensity they were playing at. Because, I, you know, watching it, I completely forgot it's an exhibition. They were playing it yeah. as if it was a proper tournament, which I hope will be replicated in the progress tour, that you girls will just completely forget about this as an exhibition and go, this is, you know, this is yeah. a proper competition. Yeah, of course. I think um, we're all of that level where when we step on the court, we expect, you know, the best from ourselves and expect to give 100 percent but and i mean it's also important to remember it's a game and you know it's the first tournament back and to enjoy yourself i think a lot of players um sometimes forget that they're doing this because they love to do it and it's not like a, a chore or something to put huge pressure on yourself so i th i think i mean i'm going to step out there and really just enjoy playing tennis competitively again and you know i always i always like to think that i i put 100 percent on the court so yeah i think i think all the girls would would feel the same so i think it should be a good tournament and finally for you eden and team eden subject to what's going on in the world with coronavirus if things do resume later on in the year or let's say in a year's time what's your what's your long-term goals for you uh, my long-term goals is to stay healthy and fit and um, continue enjoying what I'm doing. Uh, I'd love to reach the top 100 in both singles and doubles. Um, I really enjoy doubles as well. Um, I'm, I think, top 160 in doubles at the moment. So it's something that, you know, opens doorways for me even in singles. Um, but yeah, I think the main thing is to continue enjoying and, you know, loving the sport. And I think when you do that, your game automatically improves and you start winning and feeling confident and at the end of the day that's that's the main goal. Eden thank you so much for your time enjoy little Kobe I'm so jealous <laughs> you have a new dog I'm so jealous and uh, all the best in in the progress tour I think it's going to be fantastic I'm really excited for all of you taking part in it I think it's long overdue having this type of tournament and you're right the hype yeah. has definitely raised it here in this country so best of luck with it and, and best of luck with the rest of the year depending how things turn out no uh, thank you so much for having me and yeah i hope you enjoy watching the progress tour on tv when it comes on but yeah enjoy the rest of lockdown and stay safe <laughs>